My name is uh, Professor Mary Copeland. I'm Professor of Translational Hematology at the University of Glasgow. Today, I'm going to be talking about the treatment of myeloid last phase CML for the International CML Foundation. So these are my disclosures. So within my talk today, I'm going to cover the outcomes for blast phase CML. I'm going to discuss the current management for myeloid blast phase some recent clinical trials, and also potential therapy options for the future for myeloid blast phase. There are some caveats to this talk. So frequently the clinical trial data doesn't distinguish between lymphoid, myeloid, or biphenotypic disease, but I will try to highlight where this is throughout the talk. For all the clinical trials, because blast phase CML is so rare, the numbers tend to be small, and the data is very limited for second and third generation TKIs. For example, there's no data on de novo blast phase CML for the second and third generation TPIs. So first of all, if we think a little bit about the progression to blast phase CML, within chronic phase CML, the, the stem cells are capable of self-renewal. Um, and in general, the leukemia cells are uh, TKI sensitive. While uh, reactive oxygen species and DNA damage are increased, they're not as high as they are in last phase. As, as patients progress through, through um, high-risk chronic phase or accelerated phase to last phase, we see the acquisition of mutations such as T315i or cytogenetic abnormalities such as trisomy 8 or acquisition of molecular abnormalities such as TP53. And this comes with the development of TKI resistance, a huge increase in DNA damage in reactive oxygen species, an epigenetic reprogram with a convergence on PRC1 and PRC2 complexes. Moving on to more clinical aspects now, I think everyone knows that blast phase CML is a rare disease with a poor prognosis. And despite aggressive therapy, including allogeneic stem cell transplant, outcomes remain poor. Responses to TKIs are seen, but they're not maintained. And if you look at the graph on the left, um, you can see that responses have improved in the imatinib era with a higher proportion of patients proceeding to transplant. But the number of patients proceeding to transplant is small and survival remains poor and of the order of around 20% five years. We do see better responses in those patients that are transplanted, particularly after achievement of a second chronic phase. And this is just highlighted in the figure on the right, showing that around 40% of patients achieve long-term remission if they're transplanted in a second chronic phase as opposed to when blast phase is active. Assess, baseline assessment um, for uh, blast phase CML requires a number of different investigations. So all patients will require a full blood count blood film and a 500 cell differential. Also require immunophenotyping by flow cytometry to determine the, the type of uh, blast phase, whether it's lymphoid, myeloid, or biphenotypic. Cytogenetics for full karyotype, a, a BCR-able quantitative PCR, um, BCR able kinase domain mutation by NGS, both at diagnosis and on therapy, as rarely uh, TKI naive patients can present with BCR able kinase domain mutations. Uh, NGS myeloid and lymphoid panel assessment should be performed where this is available, as this may show additional poor prognosis uh, variants such as ASXL1. Uh, tissue typing of patients and siblings and a budge search should be performed if transplant may be an option further down the line. And a lumbar puncture and CSF cytology, um, likely with intrathecal methotrexate therapy, should be performed in those patients with lymphoid and mixed phenotype last phase disease. And on the right of this table, you can see those investigations that should be repeated whilst on therapy. And generally, this should be done every three months or so. This is moving on to the data looking at the outcome with single agent amatinib in historical studies of TKI naive patients. So this is right through from the phase one amatinib studies to um, more, more recent studies um, with, with higher doses. The majority of the studies don't split patients between lymphoid 
or myeloid disease. But if, if you look at the responses, you can see that median survival is between six and 10 months, and only a very small number of patients um, achieve a cytogenetic response. Um, these studies have been done with doses of imatinib from 300 milligrams right up to 1,000 milligrams. And if you look at the top and the bottom studies in the figure, these are split by lymphoid and myeloid disease, that you can see the outcomes tend to be better for those patients with lymphoid disease as compared to myeloid. And in she a recent cohort study by Jane et al. identified myeloid immunophenotypes being associated with an inferior outcome with a five-year overall survival of 15% compared with 30% for lymphoid last phase. So this is looking at the outcomes for single agent second and third generation TKIs in myeloid last phase. All these studies have been done in patients who previously received imatinib, so none of these studies are performed on TKI naive patients. And as you can see here, the outcomes remain unsatisfactory and are very disappointing for second and third generation TKIs. The 12 month overall survival ranges between 25 and 49 percent and medium survival between six and 12 months. So we need to think about combination therapies and novel agents to try and improve outcomes for patients. But before doing this, what about panatinib? Because um, this is the most potent TKI that we have. And in the PACE clinical trial, panatinib was used as second, third or fourth line therapy in patients with blast phase CML. It's been shown to be active against treatment resistant Kyrie's mutations, including the T315i, and has demonstrated some efficacy as a single agent in blast phase CML. And we can see in the bar chart on the top right that complete cytogenetic responses are achieved in around 18% of patients, and um, slightly higher in those patients with a T315i mutation. But then if we look at the survival curve at the bottom right, we can see that unfortunately these mean these um, responses are not maintained, and overall survival at three years is 9%, with those patients with a T315i mutation doing particularly badly. And indeed, median progression-free survival is less than four months for blast-based CML. This table is showing um, outcome data for clinical trials using combinations of TKIs with other agents. Um, so within the UK, we have recently published the Matchpoint clinical trial, which is a top study like combining panatinib with black-eyed chemotherapy. And this gave a median overall survival of 12 months um, and a CCYR rate of 50%. Um, and this is one of the, the better studies. You, you can see here that the median overall survival tends to be a little higher in some of these studies, but not all of them. Um, perhaps one of the most promising is the combination of desatinib with desitabine, but a number of the patients in this study um, had accelerated phase or pH positive AML. Um, and there's a, a more recent study also looking at azacitidine in combination with TKIs, which did give quite a long survival, although the number of patients is very small, so we would suspect that this is a very highly selected population. So I think definitely some small improvements here. And indeed, Jane et al um, did a meta-analysis of a number of different studies. And looking at five-year survival, you can see here that the combination of TKI with chemotherapy was superior as compared to TKI alone or non-TKI-based therapies such as omocetaxine or single-agent decitabine or azacitidine with a five-year overall survival of 29% for the TKI plus chemotherapy. So what do the guidelines say about treatment of myeloid blast phase? Well, they all recommend an attempt at return to a second chronic phase, although acknowledging the outcome was currently available, TKI alone is poor. It suggests the addition of chemotherapy based on AML regimens for myeloid blast phage, such as desatinib or panatinib with black eyed chemotherapy. And the choice of TKI should be based on prior therapy and B3 able kinase domain mutational status. And after a second chronic phase, chronic phase is achieved, then patients should proceed to allogeneic stem cell transplant where possible without delay. 
in, in the ELM guideline, post-transplant TKI isn't discussed. The NCSN, NCCN guideline is very similar for myeloid blast phase at the bottom, so it recommends a clinical trial if available, or AML type induction therapy with TKI. Um, or TKI alone for less fit patients. In terms of our UK um, BSH guideline, it, it's similar to the other guidelines. Again, acknowledging that there are multiple single arm studies, but no randomized controlled trials. There's limited data on the use of second and third generation TKIs and de novo blast phase CML. And in the UK, our most common approach is flag ida chemotherapy, usually with a TKI. All patients should proceed to allogeneic transplant if eligible and have a suitable donor, regardless of response to initial therapy. And biphenotypic patients should receive CNS prophylaxis. So the, these are the recommendations from the BSH guideline in addition to those of the ELN or NCCN. Looking at outcomes for allogeneic blast phase CML, um, there are a number of studies um, that have looked at patients over many years and you can see that the bottom two studies that from Vadushkovic and Niederweiser and um, these have looked at uh, patients over 15 to 25 years and there's quite a lot of patients in these studies and you can see three year over overall survival in these patients is between 30 and 40 percent but relapse mortality still remains quite high between 20 and 30 percent so Definitely, if you can get a patient to transplant, um, they're likely to do better, but outcomes still remain poor, with 40 to 50 percent of patients relapsing. This table is looking at ongoing clinical trials in a blast, myeloid blast phase CML, and you can see that there are a number of studies here. So you may have seen the HQP over Imbatinib study uh, presented at ASH. So this is looking in combination uh, of over Imbatinib with blinitumumab in all phases of CML and also pH positive ALL, it's a phase one study. Then there are studies looking at fludarabine, cytarabine, and Pegrisbaspase. Um, there's a, another antibody study which is looking at all types of myeloid malignancy. Perhaps the study of the most interest is the PONASA study, which is looking at a combination of panatinib with 5 azocytidine in patients with accelerated phase or myeloid blast crisis. And hopefully, some results from that will be available soon. And on the next slide, I'm going to present some early data that was presented at ASH of desired to be metoclax and panatinib in patients with Philadelphia chromosome positive AML or myeloid blast phase or accelerated CML. So, so far in this study, 13 patients have been treated, four patients having received prior panatinib and three patients were treatment naive. Um, overall, the treatment the triplet was well tolerated. Um, the decitabine was given over five days, the venetoclax over 20 days, and the panatinib over 21 days in cycle one. And in later cycles, again, decitabine over five days, venetoclax over 21 days, and then panatinib daily. And it was 28 day cycles. Marrow remission was achieved in 69% of patients, and there was durable remission in the absence of stem cell transplant, median overall survival as shown here was under 12 months, however, but it's our early days and few patients have been treated so far. So within our centre, this is our algorithm for treating um, blast phase CML. So I've broke it down into de novo blast phase and progression to blast phase on TKI. So for all patients that are eligible, we would do tissue typing and a donor search. And then in both groups, we would perform BCRA kinase domain mutation testing um, at diagnosis or at progression. For those patients that are TKI naive, um, we would our current UK practice would be to give flag IDA with TKI if the patient is fit enough. And the TKI used would be either imatinib at high dose, so 800 milligrams, or dizatinib 140 milligrams. In the de novo patients, we're aiming for a return to, to chronic phase and then allotransplant. And then 
After transplant, we would consider um, TKI maintenance with early withdrawal of immunosuppression and prophylactic DLI. For those patients that have progressed, um, the choice of TKI would be dependent on prior TKIs given um, and the pattern of resistance and intolerance and also mutation screen results. However, our current UK practice in this population would be to give flag ida with penatinib at a dose of 30 milligrams. Again, the aim of therapy is to return to a chronic phase and then proceed to allogeneic transplant. And we would consider post allo TKI maintenance, but is dependent on previous patterns of resistance and intolerance. And again, we would look to withdraw immunosuppression early and give prophylactic DLI. We, we could also think about alternative AL, AML regimens um, or ALL type induction, depending on its myeloid or lymphoid blast base. You could think about donorubin's pytarabine or azacytidine, although within the UK, this would be. Um, an approved therapy. And for all patients with lymphoid or biphenotypic disease, we would recommend intrathecal methotrexate. And there's literature showing that dizatinib and panatinib may have better CNS pe penetration than the other TKIs. Um, re regardless of therapy, a patient should consider on three monthly BCR able monitoring, at least indefinitely, and you may want to make this more frequent. Recently, um, the results of the European Leukemia Net Blast Crisis Registry were presented at ASH, and I would encourage you to participate in this if you can. I think going forward, this large registry is going to provide a lot of information about the clinical details of CML and suitable therapies, and also provide more information about the biology of the disease and disease characteristics with patients on TKIs. And my final slide is just to remind everyone about the 25th John Goldman CML conference, which is going to be held in Mandalu in October, with an abstract deadline in May of this year. Thank you very much.